then you have to go back up there again because of this. Oh, but as to the story of the Black Cauldron, um, in the book, you're, there's a, a, a really stubborn, prideful, he's kind of like Terran, except he's like, he's not Bizarro Terran, he's, him and Terran are both adventure seeking, and both like, you know, they're young, and they don't understand, you know, how tough the world can be, per se, but Terran at least has a basically decent heart, you know, at, at the heart of it, even though he doesn't understand how horrible war can be. He still has a good heart. Uh, the friend, the pr I think it's a prince that accompanies him. This prince really, I mean, he's arrogant, he's stuck up, he, it's really all about him. And we're gonna climb up this rope, which means let's save. Anytime you go back up to the, the castle, it's best to save. Um, but throughout the book, you have to understand, Terran in the, in the, in the game we play and in the movie, like he sacrifices the sword to get the cauldron. In the book, what he gives up is a lot more important because in the book, he uh, he gives up a talisman that was given to him by a dying friend or a really good friend of his, someone who had been almost a mentor to him, a really uh, renowned warrior. And so this amulet, it's not just a normal amulet, it reveals the heart, it, it uh, shows dreams, it opens up a person to emotional experiences they could never otherwise have. And so it, it's really meaningful in kind of changing uh, Terran's character. And so to get the Black Cauldron, he has to give that up because he knows the sacrifice is necessary. So that's one point where Terran starts to change by starting to understand the meaning of sacrifice. So come the end of the book, I think that Terran is willing to to sacrifice himself if it's necessary to destroy the cauldron. I'm not sure which way I want to go back into the castle. Um, but you know, at the end of the and at the end of the Black Cauldron story, you know, there we go. Uh, uh, in book two of the Chronicles of Prydain, um they're imprisoned, they've been betrayed, Aaron, who is the wizard, um, has is on the verge of capturing the Black Cauldron for himself, and Terran really... Terran, at that point, realizes what must be done is that he has to give up his life. Um, let's get our magic sword out, because we don't, oh, we don't have the magic sword anymore. Okay, well, hopefully we don't get captured. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, we need to get back into prison because that's where they're holding the cauldron. Um, there we go. Quick way down. Um, but he he ends up actually not having to give himself up. Because that prince, you examine the grate, it is merely resting against the wall. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> the Horn King is lowering a skeleton into the Black Cauldron. So we're basically approaching the last stage of the game. And so, before we go here, let me just sort of sum up how the story ends in the book. Because the movie and the game follow each other pretty closely. Terran, on the verge of willing to kill himself to save the world, um, his friend, that prince, seeing all that Terran has become, and also seeing that Terran, an assistant pig keeper, has more nobility than he as a prince does, finally realizes that being a hero is about more than just going to war. It's about being willing to make the sacrifice. So Terran doesn't have to kill himself. The prince does. He, he willingly tosses himself into the cauldron. Oh no, the Horn King is lowering a skeleton into the Black Cauldron. So, Aaron is defeated. Now, Aaron comes back in the next three books. He doesn't, his, his mission doesn't end here. So let's save, because this is going to be... There's a couple things that happen here, and I just don't want to. I don't want to mess things up. Oh, jeez. Okay, a skeleton rises from the pile of bones and begins to march away. Now, you don't want to get in the way of those things. And if... 
if too many of those guys resurrect, it's game over. So we gotta time this just so that after he leaves, we get in there. There we go. Horn King, look here, you shout. You hold the mirror directly in front of the mirror, Horn King's eyes. He sees not his face, but his true inner self. The vision of his evilness is so overpowering that he runs to the evil cauldron and leaps inside. The cauldron begins to tremble violently and emits a frightful roar, shaking the castle to its very foundations. The Horn King is destroyed. The castle walls tremble and shake. Stones fall and pil pillars collapse around you. The force of the exploding cauldron throws you out of the Horn King's secret chamber and into the moat. You grab a piece of floating wood and hang on for dear life. Hold on tight, Terran. Well, young Terran, things are not working out as you expected, are they? Cackled the witches. Being a great hero is not all it's cracked up to be. Since you won't be using it, we've decided we want our cauldron back. Of course, we'll not just take it. We'll trade you for it. Terran, we offer you the magnificent warrior shield. With it, you could be the most courageous fighter in all Pride Aang. So we're not going to take that. See, this is the part of, did you learn your lesson? Uh... In the in the books, you're given trades as well. Um, in the oh, see, in the movie, that little guy Gurgi that we saw stumbling around here for about five seconds, he throws himself in to save the world, sort of like the prince in the books throws himself in. Um, but in the game, we managed to find a way to destroy the Black Cauldron without having Gurgi toss himself in. If you trade away the magic mirror, I believe you can trade the magic mirror to the witches to get the Black Cauldron. Um, you have no way of destroying the Horn King, so it's up to Gurgi to save the world. Uh, and so at this point, he would be dead, but he's not, so I'm really not sure what's going to happen now, because if you don't take any of the gifts, you can get Gurgi's life back. So let's just go through. If you don't want that, how about this? A magic suit of impenetrable armor. It will protect you from all mortal weapons, and you'll live to a ripe old age. And we'll just sit here and know. You drive a hard bargain, pig boy. Here's our final offer. Give us the cauldron and you'll have your magic sword back. See, maybe I'm supposed to take the sword. Oh, it did it automatically. You once again hold your special sword in your hand. Now immortal, you live to a ripe old age, fight many battles, and thanks to the sword, always emerge victorious. Well, they hope that I've enjoyed my visit to Pride Dane and the success I've had with the Black Cauldron, and I hope you've enjoyed your time listening to this Let's Play. Uh, I scored 217 out of 230 points, which isn't bad. I found just about everything. I really couldn't tell you where those last 13 points come from. I thought I did everything. Maybe I missed something. Um, I don't know. But I'm still pretty happy with the score. And the, really, the point of the game that I wanted to communicate was that the story... The story it's based on the movie is it's good, but the books themselves are just they're timeless. They're really about how you have to learn to appreciate the fact that life is about more than just being the big guy. It's about more than just being the hero, and being a hero requires a lot of sacrifice. And Taryn learns that over time. Um, but two, the game itself is wonderfully made. I mean, the art direction is great. Uh, it's a lot easier than the King, uh, King's Quest series, but. It's still a great, great uh, way to pass your time. And when I played it, it took hours, and I lived in Pride Dane. I thought this game was wonderful. And, you know, it's just one of those games that I wish that I could replicate that experience in my modern gaming. Um, but as for now, that is it. Thank you for listening to this Let's Play. Um, and I hope that you, um, well, you enjoy, uh, you've enjoyed it, and that maybe it's given you some interest in either reading the books, watching the movie, or playing the game.